casa. I can't believe this, you guys. I can't believe it. Look at her. This is a mama bear, and you can see her three cubs are with her. She's teaching them how to catch salmon to fatten up for hibernation. I'm Raywin Grant. I'm a National Geographic explorer, and I study black bears. I am a large carnivore ecologist, which means I study meat-eating animals. In particular, I study black bears and their movement and behavior around human areas. These are poop gloves from yesterday. Ray to the stage. I'm definitely a city girl. I didn't have my first experience in the outdoors until I was in my early 20s. That really helped me realize that this work was something that I could be excited about forever. Go, 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 go! A lot of people are not like me. They don't love bears because they have scary interactions with them. That's called human-bear conflict. Bears are actually really important for ecosystems to stay healthy. So part of my work is to get rid of human-bear conflict. Black bears are coming in from California, crossing the Sierra Nevada mountains, and recolonizing historic habitat. One of the cool things that my GIS work allows me to do is map the areas where humans and bears are overlapping. All right, I need to figure out where these bears are. GIS turns statistics and numbers into pictures and maps. So I can upload a data layer of bad bear habitat. Red means towns, cities, roads. This is Carson City, which is the capital of Nevada. So you can imagine that it would be dangerous for bears. And then I can have another layer of really green, lush forest spaces. Now I have my predictions of where is really good bear habitat and some kind of dangerous bear habitat. It's time for me to go into the field and track how often bears are going into the red zone to make sure people don't have conflicts with them. Part of my field work requires getting up really, really early because bears are most active at dawn and dusk. Ooh, look at this. Scratch, you can see right here, scratch. That tells me bears are here. If I pull out my GPS unit, and I use it to mark locations where I see bears or evidence of bears. Once I get thousands of points of where bears either are or have been, I can put that information back into the map. Pretty often, I also get to touch bears. All done. <laughs> Time to warm up. I get to put collars on them, which is another way that I get really good GPS data. Inside of this black container is a GPS unit. It's also a trap for a bear. That makes it safe for me to tranquilize the bear. I put the collar around their neck, bolt it shut, and I'm out of there. I've just uploaded the locations of every single bear that I've ever put a GPS collar on. They're showing up here as little colorful dots, different colors for different bears. What I'm seeing is actually making me a little bit nervous because although the bears are mostly staying in places that don't have a lot of people, there are some bears that are getting pretty close to the cities. The only reason they would come into a human area is because they're looking for food. One of the cool things that my GIS work allows me to do is bring my information back to communities that live with bears. Science isn't useful unless it's communicated. And what I love about GIS is it allows me to collect data, to analyze data, and then to produce a visual representation. Yes, a bear-proof trash can. I love to see this. Governments have actually taken some of my work into consideration to change where they're gonna build roads and highways to better protect bear habitat. Do bears like marshmallows? They do, sometimes I- I'm really hoping that my work with black bears can really help us to get to a place of coexistence. 
for bears and people in the future.